From Eyewitness News, this is Newsmakers. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. Since the housing collapse five years ago, abandoned and foreclosed homes have been a plague on Rhode Island. Ground zero is Providence. Target 12 examined the mushrooming problem of abandoned homes when the housing market first collapsed. Angel Tavares was in the thick of it then as a housing court judge. This week on Newsmakers, we take a look at Providence's vacant home crisis, now half a decade after the real estate crash. And we bring Newsmakers on the road, an extended interview with Mayor Angel Tavares as we tour some of the hardest hit areas of Providence. First, an update, a close look at how many abandoned homes are in Providence right now and how many got so bad they had to be torn down. Touring Providence with Mayor Angel Tavares. Gracias. You got a lot of work to do. You get the sense his city is like a home in itself. And it's overflowing. And he's a parent annoyed at some of the mess. You can see cans in here and other things that should definitely be in the recycling. Bin. You can also see, you know, the graffiti and some other things on it. This is a blight on the community. The biggest blight are abandoned homes. According to records obtained by Target 12 from City Hall, there are 501 vacant or abandoned properties in Providence. Are abandoned houses still as much of a plague on the city as they were before? No, I, I think it's um, stabilized. For no-show property owners, city officials have had it. Documents reveal that just last month, Housing Court Judge Jorge Alorza issued a $150,000 fine on a bank. That for failing to show up to answer questions about a foreclosed home falling into disrepair. It's believed to be the largest fine in Providence Housing Court history. But banks cannot decide that they're going to simply disregard uh, their responsibility and not pay attention to court orders. Tavera says they're working on a pilot receivership program where the city needs to step in. Vacant homes with deadbeat owners would be assigned a receiver and rehabilitated. The original owner could then pay the city back or it would be put up for sale. Houses like this can drag people, uh, drag the, the neighborhood down. And what we're going to be doing with this one is we're looking at whether or not this is a possible candidate for the receivership program. The mayor is trying to get the program funded, but at a certain point, houses become downright dangerous and the city has to tear them down. Since 2009, the city has demolished 23 properties, according to records at City Hall. That's a heavy decision, isn't it, ordering a house to be torn down? Uh, it is. Uh, it is, and but we have to do it sometimes. That's what happened here last year. Ultimately, what I hope is what will happen here is that. Um, that's my hope. A spokesperson for the city says they hope to have the housing receivership program funded by year's end, an effort to make dilapidated properties into homes. Now, our extended interview with Mayor Angel Tavares. When we met up with the mayor in the Onlyville section of Providence, he was immediately approached by two Spanish-speaking men looking for his help. We pick up our conversation with the mayor there. Who is that all about? Um, <coughs> he has a situation with mattresses and trying to dispose of some mattresses. And, um, and so we're going to try to help uh, address that because we have free disposal of mattresses um, at Allen's Avenue. And you also, if you let us know, we'll pick them up at your house, but it's like a $25 charge. This is the type of nitty gritty <laughs> stuff that you get involved with day in, day out, huh? You know, people think about you tackling pension plans and things like that, but that guy just came up to you and talked to you about mattresses, and that's a quality of life stuff that you have to deal with. Absolutely, and uh, one of the things, like, we did the road bond uh, issue so that we could pave the worst roads first. Um, it affects, that's like our number one complaint, and has been since, like, I think 2006, and I, don't, I haven't done a survey. They did a survey in 06, and it was the number one 
complaint in 06. And the roads haven't really gotten that much better since 06. Yeah, right. And so um, these are things that have impact people every single day. And um, so uh, you heard the gentleman in the car leaving and talking about, you know, trash and, and uh, right. rats and everything else. Uh, it, quality of life is very important. And ultimately, um, if people feel good about the city, um, that's a good thing. Well, let's talk about the quality of life. With, you know, over my shoulder over there, we have that home boarded up. Yeah. You have uh, a home here that yeah. you're, <clears throat> obviously, they're, they're making improvements to. You know, kind of like the, the weather we have today, do, do abandoned homes and foreclosed homes hang like a cloud over the city of Providence? Oh, I think it's a issue, a huge issue, not just for our city, it's all across the country, but in our city we have a lot of um, foreclosed and vacant property, and uh, it impacts the neighborhood, uh, and it also hurts property values. The other thing about it is that if you, <clears throat> if you live in a neighborhood where all the houses are kept up nicely, there's almost a pressure on you to keep up your house. Right. Uh, when you have situations like this, it's almost uh, it's an indication of um, people not caring, and uh, we have to change so, that. So, what do you do about that? I mean, that house is boarded up. It's an eyesore. It's an eyesore. It can yeah. bring down the entire neighborhood. Yeah. That's part of why we've done the nuisance task force and trying to address properties like that. You know that I'm a housing court judge, a former housing court judge, right. and this is an, an, a really important issue for me. It's important not just because it's boarded up, but because we have people who need housing in the city. Yeah. And so, so to the idea that we have housing in the city, we need to uh, fix It's just them. not available. Exactly. Um, that, to me, is a, a big problem. So what we're focusing on are problem properties um, and working with the police department, working with our lawyers, and trying to address them uh, in a comprehensive way. But the problem with that is that it's almost like every house is different. So that house may have a different issue than this house, um, and we have to focus on, uh, on them almost one by one. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of work to do. A lot of people <clears throat> might forget that as housing court judge, you oversaw uh, housing right as the bottom fell out on the city. And all of a sudden, foreclosures, abandoned properties just skyrocketed. And we did a story back when you were still on the bench when that was going on. Now, luckily, my first year as mayor was a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, since you sat on the bench and you were dealing with all the abandoned properties, can you tell us if it's getting any better? Are these neighborhoods improving, uh, or are abandoned houses still as much of a plague on the city as they were before? No, I, I think it's um, stabilized. I think we're just beginning to go up a little bit. So I actually think it's kind of just stabilized. Um, one of the things that I was working on when you were, uh, when we first talked, was trying to implement a dual receivership program, yeah. which we actually tried on one house, but the cost of repairs was so much that it just didn't make sense. And um, But we're trying again now, now that I'm mayor, and really making it a, a priority. And what is that? <clears throat> the receivership essentially is, if you have a house like this that is a uh, nuisance, and it's defined by statute what a nuisance is, and it's abandoned, um, <clears throat> you basically first give the owner an opportunity to fix it, and if they don't, you can actually appoint a receiver um, that takes over the property and uh, fixes the property, can you even ultimately sell the property with court approval and there's a process for it. So the idea is <clears throat> with abandoned, uh, abandoned and vacant property, you have the ability uh, following a process to appoint a receiver, to fix them up, to get them back into the hands of people um, who are going to live there and take good care of it, and um, it will help neighborhoods. And we're working, Rhode Island Housing is going to be helping us. Uh, with this as well, and as I said, now as mayor, I'm a little bit. It's a little bit different than being a judge, where as a judge you really need to be impartial. As a mayor, you can be an advocate, and you yeah. can say, "This is how we're going to try to do this." As a judge, you need to be fair to everyone. Um, so we're going to be working on that. Fair to everyone, but you also have to punish people, right? <clears throat> uh, you do, but let me tell you something, Tim. When I was a judge, we had people come in and they had the foreclosure notice, and they brought them in. They brought them in, and they show you that. So what do I do? Do I find these people who are having their homes foreclosed? Right. Now I find people who I felt have the ability to improve and fix their home and for whatever reason chose not to. But how do you, it's like adding insult to injury. They're losing their home, They're they want to stay in it, and they have the evidence there and they show you, you, show you the evidence and, um, and you're talking about I want you to paint your house. 
well, they're taking my house from me. So it's a, it, it's a hard, it's a balance. I think now, and I think you've seen it with Judge Alorsa yeah. and some other folks, um, now they have been pretty aggressive with judges, something, uh, with um, banks, something I support. They've been uh, a little bit more um, aggressive with uh, some homeowners and different people, uh, something I support. But I think it, you have to look at what the ability uh, to fix and to pay. Because I understood, quite frankly, if your house is getting foreclosed, the last thing you're going to do is paint it. Uh, I want to talk to you about Judge uh, Eliza. We, I just got some documents from him. He fined a bank, listen to this, $150,000 for being a no-show in his court. He was really upset. Uh, I think just based on looking at some of the stuff that you had done there, that's got to be the highest fine. That's the highest fine I've ever heard of, $150,000. Do you agree with that? Was that fair to find the bank hundred fifty grand for that? Well, I don't know all the details, but I will say this, and that is that um, we must respect court orders. And uh, when a court orders you uh, under the power of the law to appear in court and you don't appear, um, that, is, uh, uh, that is unacceptable and can be contempt of court. And I can tell you as a lawyer, yeah. uh, you know, a judge wants to see you in their courtroom, you show up. Uh, I mean, I've dealt with people who've gotten subpoenas, and I've explained to them, you can't, you cannot disregard a subpoena. So um, when these banks have gotten notices to appear in Providence Housing Court, if they totally disregard those notices, there should be a sanction, and it should be appropriate. And I'm sure it was not a, a one-time one -time. first uh, offender exactly a one-time thing I'm sure it probably escalated to this point so uh, not knowing all the details I would just say that you need to obey court orders you need to be respectful of a court and uh, I know from knowing Judge Alosa knowing Chief Judge Lavender knowing Judge Rampone that they're fair um, and good people and good judges uh, and so if you come in uh, they'll work with you but banks cannot decide that they're going to simply disregard uh, their responsibility and not pay attention to court orders. You know, <clears throat> now that we have a different perspective on this house and if you don't know the story of it just that's fine but do you know the story of this property? Yeah, yeah the, I, I believe the story of this property was that this was a property where we were having a lot of problems and um, you know one of the things that I worry about not just the home but also our public safety officials that have issues with it. There was a lot of uh, uh, illicit activity going on, I believe, on the first floor. And ultimately what we were able to do using the nuisance tax force was to come together with the um, homeowner and uh, who did not live here uh, right. and tell them about what was going on. And they've uh, evicted the tenant um, from the first floor. And we have seen now a drop of calls of service to this area, um, and, or to this particular house. So uh, this was one that uh, we brought it to the attention and we were able to resolve it that way. So abandoned properties or... Uh, or Sometimes absentee a landlords that are not really paying attention to what's going on. That breeds crime. And it's something that uh, we need to be uh, wary of and uh, I would like to see a lot more uh, uh, owner-occupied housing because when you own your own home, I think you take even better care of, uh, of the home, of the sidewalk, of everything. Um, and so I think that's important. You know, talk, let me just say one thing if I could. Yeah. You know, um, and this is not bad, but uh, if you look at the, well actually it is bad, if you look at the gray trash can, you're talking about the rats. Yeah. You have that trash can um, and it's overflowing. Now, I see a Coke bottle, which should be in the recycling, in the recycling bin, and I'm gonna guess that there's probably other things that should be there. But having that opened up like that, um, gives the, uh, the, the, the rodents a place to go. So that, those are things that we have to address and we can do that as, as uh, tenants can do it and the uh, homeowners can do it. And the other thing is, you know, we've already started to increase our recycling in the city and it's not only good for the earth and it's good overall, uh, but it's gonna save us money. So we gotta do a better job of, of uh, addressing that as well as a city. When we come back, we hop into the mayor's car. Our tour and interview with Tavares on the vacant home crisis continues. Stay with us. You're watching Newsmakers. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. There are just over 500 abandoned homes in Providence right now. Since 2009, 23 homes had to be torn down because they were deemed a public safety hazard. As a former housing court judge, Providence Mayor Angel Tavares has made tackling vacant homes a priority. Our conversation with the mayor touring Providence 
picks up in his car. In the context of what we're talking about here, does it, um, I'm curious if one of your considerations for whatever your next move is going to be is um, any unfinished business. Does that at all play into your head? Do you feel like you have this responsibility to, in particular, take care of this issue, something you started as a housing court judge? Well, let me just say that I don't think that the business of running a city is ever done. I think that the responsibility for any elected official is to make sure that you leave your post and you leave it better than you found it and um, that the, um, the city or whatever position you have is definitely headed in um, the right direction. And what I'm trying to do more than anything in the city is to improve um, the city and make sure to improve education, to improve our streets, to improve housing, um, to make sure that things are moving in the right direction. So I always focus on that. And the most important thing, and I've said this to you before, is you know I need to focus on um, being successful as a mayor because it's important for our city and for our state. So um, the way I look at it is always being moving uh, moving the city in the right direction and I feel like we're doing that and this is one of the big issues for that I mean this is I mean, it's a tangible visible you know this house over at our, our right hand side I mean this is just um, can be a pretty damaging image to to the city yeah you know? absolutely and so we're not, <laughs> we're not on this issue you 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 talked about there be about there were about 900 properties that were abandoned when you were a housing court judge whatever that number is now we're not out of the woods yet no so. no and and uh, I think you're absolutely right um, we have a lot more work to do and my job is to put in um, a system to deal with it and to do the very best we can and to adjust because one of the things we're going to find as we try different things with different houses you know, it might be a, a bump or an obstacle, so you find a way around it. Um, is to try to solve the problem and uh, and uh, and move uh, w with all um, speed to uh, to make sure we have as many houses back up and uh, and functioning as possible. But no, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of work to do, and there'll be a lot of work to do when I'm done as well. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I hope it'll be less work. Um, because the, the idea is to do uh, um, leave it better. So Th this is a house that um, was abandoned and was being used by squatters and other people going in. Uh, they've stripped the house of uh, of uh, a lot of the uh, pipe, the, the, the pipes copper. and the copper and all of that. Um, and you can see from this some of the trash mess. in the back, uh, it's been kind of a dumping ground. Um, you can also see, you know, the graffiti and some other things on it. Um, now, you know, I haven't been inside the house, but it's it would appear <clears throat> just on the outside, and it's a, a luminous siding, so but uh, or a vinyl siding, but um, you know, it seems like it's an indecent structural shape. Yeah. I'm saying, you know, I'm not. I haven't been inside. So I can't tell you for sure, but. Um, this is a blight on the community. You know, take a look over here. These folks have satellite dishes, you know, uh, shutters on their windows. Kids keeping, obviously live there. Kid, kids live there, you know. Uh, they're keeping it up, and you see the, all the shutters on the window. Um, you look over here, 114, uh, relatively clean, um, you know, uh, pretty decent shape. You know, 110, um, you know, another satellite thing here. Um, you know, you've got uh, uh, this one here. It looks like it needs a little bit of work. B um, but houses like this can drag people, uh, the, uh, drag the, the neighborhood down. And what we're going to be doing with this one is we're looking at whether or not this is a possible candidate for the receivership program and have someone come in and take over it and uh, fix it up. Uh, and at that point, uh, try to sell it and get it into the hands of people um, that will appreciate it. It's a multifamily, uh, and I can tell that by the uh, box here. So it looks like it's either two or three. Yeah, right. So, um, although I would be really curious to see if whether or not this is illegal two or three. Um, though it does have the fire escape, uh, which may uh, make it I, I got to tell I'm just listening to you talk about this, and your level of expertise on this really speaks to your years on the bench. I mean, you know, you're looking at the electoral box, and you're you're questioning whether it's a legal two or three, and yeah. and, and all these. Uh, well, it's something I care about, and it's something that's really important, and I've had I have had that opportunity, um, and it's it's frustrating um, because 
when you see this in the neighborhood, um, it's not acceptable, and so we got to do more. And the uh, problem, a lot of, a lot of the problems are related to money, right? Sure. Um, <clears throat> what's going to happen here when we come in here is well, the receiver has to have a plan to fix it. That'll be how much it's going to cost, and um, then we got to figure out how do we uh, make it uh, happen. Uh, but we're going to try because this is not acceptable. What's the pool of money that the receivership can tap into? I mean, how much are, we, are you looking to fund it? How, how, is that, well, how does that work? Well, Rhode Island Housing is willing to provide uh, some gap financing. So they would basically provide almost a mortgage. And the, under the law, the mortgage actually is a super mortgage. So it takes priority over everything else that's on it. And the reason it's that way is because under the process, you first notify anyone who has an interest and you give them an opportunity to fix it. If they decline, they're going to lose their position, so to speak, um, so you can have a super lean, for lack of a better word. So Rhode Island Housing is looking to help us provide some financing, so they would lend money to the receiver. It becomes a first mortgage. Once this is fixed, um, you can either have the people who own it pay, pay you, or you can go to Superior Court and go through a process, sell the house, and the first people paid back is the first mortgage in Rhode Island Housing, and the receiver can make... Um, I think a premium of five, ten percent. I don't. Uh, I, I forget exactly, but there's some type of mechanism for a little premium as well. Um, so that's kind of what where our hope is. And this would be an interesting um, house because, as I said, from the outside, you know, we got to clean the graffiti and everything else. And I don't know what's under the siding, um, but it it doesn't look. Look, you look at the, even some of the windows. Some of these windows are relatively newer windows, yeah. right? Yeah. How long do houses like this sit abandoned at this point? Too long. And uh, too long. I mean, I don't know how long this has been abandoned, um, but I can tell you it's been a while. And that's why we have to do more to try to fix it. it does this, is this neighborhood in particular, the area of the city we're in, feeling it really hard? Well, we have several areas who have felt it, um, but this is an area that we've concentrated on <clears throat> because part of it is almost like doing a pilot program and saying, okay, let's try it in this area and let's show the impact it can have and then go from there. And then Oneyville neighborhood with the strong uh, community policing and Lieutenant Isabella, who's here, uh, with a lot of uh, good work that's going on here, is a really good neighborhood um, for us to focus on. So um, this is, it is one of the hottest hit neighborhoods, uh, but unfortunately I can't tell you that it's the only one. There have been others too. Look at this right here, okay? You've got this going on right here, and you had this over here in front of, literally, I mean, in front of that school, uh, the debate school uh, right there. And you, and you know that not only do we have that house, we have another one um, behind there. Um, and this was an absolute eyesore. And if you look at this street, um, you know, once again, you can see that there, uh, the housing stock is older, but people are uh, trying to maintain their street, and it's important for the kids as well. So the city tore it down. What did tearing this property down do for this neighborhood? Well, I think that it, one, uh, I hope, uh, lets people know that we care, that we're focused, um, that it's important that we keep our neighborhood uh, neighborhoods up. Um, I think it also makes it safer, quite frankly. Um, I'm not worried anymore. You know, right here, the most the kids are going to do are run around. Right. You know, I mean, uh, that's it. I'm not worried about them going into this house or uh, deciding that we're going to have fun by doing something. I think it's uh, safer from another perspective. I'm not worried about the fire department being called in the middle of the night because this house is on fire because someone was inside trying to keep warm or something like that. Um, and ultimately what I hope is what will happen here is that. Um, that's my hope, is that this space will convert itself into uh, newer, more modern housing and, uh, and that will help everyone in the neighborhood uh, and it will be a lot safer place. If you could flip a switch, would you do that to more properties in the city? If I had the ability to replace some of our older housing, um, abandoned, vacant, housing, I'm not talking about historic, <laughs> um, but abandoned with housing like that, absolutely. And we're, gonna, we're doing it on a s smaller scale in conjunction with a lot of the um, uh, community development corporation. So I want to be clear that that's something that uh, Oneyville Housing is working on and a lot of people are working on it. And certainly we play a small part in it and we'll continue to do that, but absolutely. And, uh, the, but the problem, and you said it 
just a little bit earlier. Well, what's the cost of demolishing the home right. and how do you do that? Um, and that's a challenge for us, but um, we're going to focus in certain instances on uh, doing what we've done here. Uh, but now that we've done this, <coughs> we need to get from here to there. And um, that's my hope. That's a heavy decision, isn't it? Ordering a house to be torn down. Uh, it is. Um, it is. And but we have to do it sometimes. And um, we, we try to be uh, judicious about it and careful about it, but uh, sometimes it's necessary. And the other part about it is it does cost money, but you want to know something? In the grand scheme of things, um, if you've saved one life, tens of thousands of dollars is not, you know, uh, just imagine having, God forbid, something happen here, a firefighter being hurt here, a police officer being hurt, a little boy or girl being hurt here. You know, it's not... Um, it's worth every penny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 there's, there's no uh, price you can put on that. Our thanks to Mayor Angel Deveras for taking the time with us. If you missed any of it, it's all online, WPRI.com. There you can also use an interactive map to pinpoint exactly where these vacant homes are, as well as the homes that have been torn down in the last four years. Thank you for watching. I'm Tim White, and we'll see you next week on Newsmakers.